We begin with breaking news here at 9 with Springfield Fire Department on the scene of a house fire off Nettleton and Webster. That's south of Division near Kansas Expressway. As you can see right there, lots of fire trucks on the scene. We have a crew telling us that the garage and at least part of that house is burned up tonight. Yeah, you can see that there on the left side of your screen now. We also just learned from the fire department that they believe this home was vacant. No one was inside when they got this call just after 8 p.m. But some severe damage to that house, and at this time they do believe it is a total loss. No word yet on the cause of that fire. In other news tonight, the winter storm has of course passed out of the Ozarks, but the cold, the snow, and the impacts are still definitely here. Thanks for joining us here at 9. I'm Mike Landis. Yeah, and I'm Lauren Barnes. That storm knocked out power in some counties in Missouri and even more in Arkansas. Still at this hour, at least 24,000 customers in Arkansas are without power. The largest concentration still appears to be in that northern area near Mountain Home in Baxter County. Yeah, the swath going from Fayetteville almost to Mountain Home on the other side. About 7,000 right now in Baxter County alone still without power. They've been working throughout these hours to try to get the lights back on for everybody. Energy says it's down to about 7,000 outages as well. That utility company had initially reported 25,000 at this time yesterday. Yeah, and although the snow has stopped falling here across the Ozark Savannah, it is a cold night for crews working to restore power. Springfield Fire Department out battling any type of emergencies tonight. Yeah, that's right. You see me trying to stay bundled up over here because just looking outside, I mean, it's making me cold with the snow on the ground and temperatures are already in the 20s. Feels like temperatures are in the low 20s as well. You can see right now we have calm conditions, clouds continuing to pass by us. Temperatures right now 29 degrees here in Springfield, 21 already up in Rolla and 28 up in Clinton. And because of the winds, well, we're feeling more like 22 here in Springfield, 11 degrees up in Rolla and 19 in Lake Ozark. So temperatures are going to continue to tumble down as we head into the overnight hours with feels like temperatures getting in those teens as we head into tomorrow morning. Here's your day planner, 33 degrees at 7 a.m. Windy, windy start. Winds are going to be picking up from the southwest around 15 to 20 miles an hour throughout the day tomorrow. The good news is at least we are going to be thawing out and temperatures are going to be warming back up into those mid to upper 40s. We have one more day other than tomorrow that temperatures are going to be warm. Then we're going right back down the hill. Coming up, I'll have those details for you, Mike. All right, thank you, Savannah. Voters in Kimberling City will soon be deciding on a public safety tax that would be used to help fund the town's police department. Proposition PD is a half cent sales tax on the April ballot upcoming, and that is estimated to bring in about $300,000 a year if it's approved. And all that money would be used for new equipment and vehicles. It'll also help recruit and train new officers. This comes after the Kimberling City Chief of Police and every officer on that force resigned back in 2021 for new opportunities or better paying jobs. The brand new police chief says the sales tax is about keeping the community safe. Since I've been sworn in last November, we saw that we needed more police officers, we needed more equipment, and uh, we needed more funding. And based off of the population that we have here, we should have seven full-time police officers. We only have six by budget. And again, voters there in Kimberling City will be seeing this on their April municipal ballot. There will also be presentations for the public in the coming weeks to learn more leading up to the election. Area hospitals still struggling to find and keep EMTs after nearly a third of paramedics nationwide left the field during the pandemic. Citizens Memorial Hospital in Bolivar is now finding a creative way to get people to consider the career. We did get word that there were some high school students interested in coming to our um, academy um, that was done, done in the fall. Our senior leadership um, decided that, you know, since there is a shortage of EMTs and paramedics, that we would go ahead and um, pay for their class for them to be in it. While he says it is not affecting their ability to keep the community safe yet, they don't want it to get to that. The full force effort is being made to recruit the younger crowd, including three Bolivar High School students who are currently taking those steps to become EMTs. For me, it's always been something I wanted to do. So I just got the opportunity and I took it. There's a lot of thinking that goes into just driving the truck too, because if you have the sirens on and you have to drive through stop signs and everything, you have to make sure that, you know, you're not going to put your life at risk or other people's at the same time.
Putting crime into focus now, charges for a Springfield man two years after he was accused of a crash that killed two people. 65-year-old Gary Calhoun Jr. now facing charges for DWI resulting in death. In 2021, the victim's family sued Calhoun and his insurance company for wrongful death. They reached settlements. Then, nearly a year after the crash, police pulled Calhoun over and arrested him for driving high on meth. That's when new charges were filed for that deadly crash. A trial has been set for a former youth basketball coach in Springfield charged with raping girls. Antoine Looney, senior, pleading not guilty to 10 charges, including child molestation. He'll face a jury trial come July. Now, Looney is accused of sexually assaulting at least six girls as young as nine years old. Springfield police are warning us about a recent increase in identity theft and fraud cases involving fake credit cards. So they're giving us some tips on how to spot a scam. Now, when it comes to emails or text messages, be cautious about clicking on any of those links. Also be suspicious of unsolicited calls. And if someone asks you to buy a gift card or pay for something in Bitcoin, police say that's definitely a scam. Last but not least, never give out any personal information over the phone. In anticipation of graphic video being released this week, defense lawyers for former Memphis cops accused of killing a man spoke out to the public today. The attorneys representing Emmett Martin III and Desmond Mills Jr. urging the public to reserve judgment for now. The district attorney called for justice for Tyree Nichols, who died following an interaction with those officers in what was supposed to be a traffic stop. Uh, unfortunately, we've all over the last couple of years seen videos uh, where there's police brutality involved. And so uh, I would just caution the public to reserve judgment. Uh, you're going to feel things, you're going to uh, experience emotions, uh, but know that there's always more to the story. Footage of that incident is said to be brutal. It is expected to be released tomorrow. Meantime, a jury has convicted an Islamic radicalist on more than 20 charges for killing eight people by driving a truck into a Manhattan bike lane in 2017. The federal crimes include murder, racketeering, and supporting foreign terrorism. That man admitted to becoming radicalized online by the Islamic State. When this testimony begins in the trial of former South Carolina attorney Alec Murdaugh, he's accused of killing his wife and 22-year-old son in July of 2021. The first witness called to the stand was Sergeant Daniel Green, who described the former attorney's appearance the night that his wife Maggie and son Paul were killed. He did not appear to be crying. He was upset, but I did not see any visible tears. During Green's cross-examination, the defense questioned him about preserving and contaminating evidence, mentioning that a deputy walking around the crime scene could have left behind bloody footprints. And you think that's, that's standard operating procedure? Well, you do your best not to contaminate anything. And this is your best? What you're looking at right now is standard procedure. Green was just one of more than 250 names on a list of potential witnesses in that case. The trial is expected to last about three weeks. Well, now that Facebook will reinstate former President Donald Trump's account, the question is, will it have any impact? The campaign experts say it could, especially when it comes to raising funds for its 2024 campaign. Madeline Rivera has more tonight from Washington. A post from January 6, 2021 is the last piece of content on former President Trump's Facebook. But this could change. Parent company Meta is reinstating his Facebook and Instagram accounts more than two years after banning him for breaking their rules during the Capitol riot. We believe the American people should hear uh, from, including on, on our apps and services, from those who want to, who want to lead them. The move could have real-time consequences for the former president's campaign. Trump remains the most ferocious fundraiser in the GOP. His campaign says Facebook will allow them to reach key voters and raise money in 2024. I think it would have been unsustainable to have Trump censored on Facebook and Instagram while every other Republican would have the ability to get their message out on the campaign trail. On Truth Social, former President Trump took a dig at Facebook, saying it lost billions of dollars in value since his suspension and praised his own social media platform, doing, quote, an incredible job. If Trump returns, Meta reminds him he has to follow their community rules. They warn because of his violations, he faces more penalties for repeat offenses. 
Democrats, meanwhile, aren't saying too much about his potential return. You have a guy who is a pathological liar, but he happens to be the former president of the United States, and he has a right to express his views. Despite criticism of a slow start, former President Trump is visiting two early voting states over the weekend, his first large public events since announcing his 2024 run. In Washington, Mala Rivera, Fox News. In more local news tonight, millions of dollars in upgrades went into a new and improved Hillcrest High School. Looks very different now. Back in 2019, voters approved a bond issue which funded millions of dollars in renovations at that school campus and several others across the city. Fox 49 Sydney Moran live tonight outside Hillcrest in North Springfield with an update on what you're seeing out there, Sydney. Well, Mike and Lauren, it was pretty packed here earlier today as the school held a ribbon cutting. Not only are you going to see changes to the outside, like here with this big Hornet sign, but as you walk in, you're going to see a lot of changes as well. Now, parts of Hillcrest date back to the 1950s, so the school says it definitely needed some upgrades. The last time there was a new addition to Hillcrest High School was back in 2010, where they built a storm shelter cafeteria. Now, once voters approved the first phase of Proposition S in 2019, school leader, leaders started to look at what the building needed. The top priority was a secure entry to the school, and that's the first thing visitors will see when they enter the school is the main office. Once they check in, families will then walk into the student center with an added space for a school store. Another priority was making sure every student was under one roof. Hillcrest used to be two two separate areas. So the building that you're in and then our main gym, we refer to it on the north side as the hyper. And so, but they were separated. Now it's connected. There was a 36 inch water main that pretty much fed Springfield their water from the Fulbright Water Treatment Center. And that had to be completely relocated in order for us to connect the two. Coming up at 930, SPS Superintendent Dr. Granina Lathan shares what the proposed projects are for the bond issue coming up on the April ballot. Reporting in Springfield, Sydney Moran, Ozarks First. Sydney, thank you. I think the last time I was in Hillcrest High School may have been 2012 for a speech and debate tournament. Night and day difference. Can't tell the difference uh, from what it used to look like. It's like a new school. Both of my boys I went to school there. They watched the last couple of years tearing down the walls, all the commotion. And they're graduated now, but they're happier for their younger friends that get to enjoy yeah. that now. So. Probably a little jealous. Pretty amazing. <laughs> All right. Still ahead tonight at 9, Ukraine faces another round of Russian missile strikes. In response to the U.S. sending Ukraine main battle tanks, Russia repeatedly targeted civilian infrastructure with heavy airstrikes. More on this after the break. You're watching Fox 49 News at 9 with Mike Landis. Lauren Barnes, weather with meteorologist Savannah Tennyson, and sports with Dan Lucy.
Fox 49 Weather with Savannah Tennyson, certified by Weather8 as the most accurate forecast in the Ozarks six years in a row. Well, things have definitely switched from the first part of this month to what we saw this week. I mean, remember, we were in the 60s, 70s, and then mid 40s. Well, today we only topped out at 31 degrees, and that was only for a few minutes. We were staying steady at 30 degrees from about 1 o'clock until about 5.30 this afternoon. That's when temperatures started to decrease. Now, the good news is we are going to be going back up the hill just for two days though, and then we're going right back down, finishing out January very, very cold. Now, as we head into tonight, you can see 29 degrees, south winds, seven miles an hour. We still have those clouds in the sky, and that's continuing to blanket most of the Ozarks right now. Now, once those move out, that's when those temperatures are really going to start to decrease. Now, as we head into tomorrow at 7 a.m., you can see mostly sunny skies across the Ozarks. As we head throughout the day, yes, there will be passing clouds throughout the day, but mostly sunny skies compared to what we saw today. Now, as we head into tonight, temperatures 25 degrees here in Springfield, 24 up in Lake Ozark and 28 over in Stockton with a south wind at 5 to 15 miles an hour. Well, that's going to be ramping up from the southwest tomorrow at 15 to 20 miles an hour sustained throughout the days. The good news is that temperatures are going to be warmer at 47 degrees. However, because of those winds, we're going to be feeling more like the low 40s, upper 30s throughout the day. So you will need that windbreaker as you head out the door in the morning. 52 degrees over in Joplin. And then as we head into Friday night, things continuing to stay calm. A few clouds are going to be welcoming you into your Saturday, especially if you're north of I-44. And then clouds are here to stay once they get into your area on Saturday late morning into Saturday afternoon. This is 8 p.m. You can see that we have a line of showers mainly along I-44. Then that's going to be transitioning into a wintry mix, maybe even some snowflakes flying in there, but that's not really going to be amounting too much. Now, if you're going north, maybe on Saturday or Sunday, you might have a few black ices on the road, so make sure to take it slow as you head up to Kansas City for the game is what I'm talking about. 52 degrees on Saturday here in Springfield, 57 over in Joplin. South winds at 15 to 25 miles an hour once again. So it's going to be another breezy day all around with gusts up to 30 to 35 miles an hour. By Sunday, that's when things start to change. Once again, 34 degrees here in Springfield. That north northeast wind at 10 to 20 miles an hour is going to be making it feel more like those low 30s, mid 20s even. So if you're going up to Arrowhead, good for you. 24 degrees though is kickoff at 530, 22 at halftime. And you may be thinking, well, that's not too bad because everybody's going to be packed in the stadium. Well, because of those breezes from the north northeast at 10 to 15 miles an hour, it's going to be feeling more like 12 degrees at kickoff and more like 9, 10 degrees at halftime. So you can just imagine by the time the game ends, it is going to be very, very cold. So please dress warmly with about 10 layers on as you head out the door to go to that game. As we head into next week, temperatures are going to stay well below average for this time of year. We have a second round of potential rain, freezing rain as we head into Monday night into Tuesday. And then that sunshine will return later in next week. Here's your seven day forecast on Sunday. Good day to stay inside cozy up by the fire because it is going to be cold at 34 degrees and dropping throughout the day. Late snow possible on Monday with a chance for a wintry mix as we head into Tuesday, starting off your February at 32 degrees. Mike, all right, going to be all right. Thank you, Savannah. Around the world, at least 11 people were killed in Ukraine after another day of heavy airstrikes by Russian forces. Dozens of drones and at least 55 missiles were launched, mostly targeting areas where people live and work. The strikes are being seen as a response to pledges from the U.S., Germany and other NATO allies to send main battle tanks to Ukraine. And that comes after months of those nations hesitating. The U.S. is also working to stop the Wagner Group, Russia's top private military contractor, from rearming its troops. The organization has been named a transitional criminal organization by the White House. Wagner is a criminal organization, and we will work relentlessly to identify, disrupt, expose, and target those who are assisting Wagner. Well, the Pentagon says Wagner has about 50,000 fighters in Ukraine, mostly recruited from Russian prisons. And still ahead tonight at 9, if you can believe it, three years have now passed since a tragic accident claimed the life of basketball legend Kobe Bryant. When we come back, we'll take a, a look back at his life and the others lost in that accident.
Welcome back tonight. Today marks three years since the sports world and the rest of the world shocked with the death of Kobe Bryant. On January 26, 2020, basketball superstar Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter Gianna and seven others died in a helicopter crash. They were on their way to Gianna's basketball game when foggy conditions contributed to that crash. Well, the FDA is now recommending a change in how Americans get their COVID vaccines. The agency is recommending replacing the original COVID vaccine with bivalent Omicron shots for all doses. Now, that bivalent COVID vaccine would include a component of the original virus strain and a component of the Omicron variant. And all 21 members of the FDA committee gave their approval to that recommendation. Now, they say it's intended to simplify the U.S.'s COVID vaccine program. Still ahead here on Fox News at 9, Netflix is cracking down on password sharing. And this announcement has customers wondering just how they plan on doing that. We'll show you more on that after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back tonight. Southwest Airlines holiday meltdown has taken a big impact on the economy of that company. The airline says it lost $220 million last quarter. During the holiday season, Southwest canceled thousands of flights because of severe weather and old outdated technology. About 2 million passengers were affected by those cancellations. The airline stock was down about 4% by late afternoon today. Netflix plans to start charging people who share their passwords beginning in March. People are wondering, rightfully so, how will Netflix know who you're sharing with? Well, in a report, a business expert says Netflix will use IP addresses, account activity from devices, and device IDs to reveal if users are sharing. The streaming company says more than 100 million households currently share passwords, which impacts its ability to invest and improve its product. Coming up next, we have a whole half hour of Fox 49 News at 9 underway. And more on that weather forecast and what it's going to look like going into the weekend. We're back in about two minutes. Stay with us.
You're watching Fox 49 News. Hillcrest High School looks a lot different after a multi-million dollar facelift. It's almost like facelift doesn't even cut it. It's like facial reconstruction. Like a brand new place, that is for sure. This comes after voters in April, uh, a few years ago, approved this bond issue. They're going to have another one on the ballot in April, and folks will have the chance to approve or deny phase two of Proposition S, which includes even more money for renovations to different schools around the district. Fox 49, Sydney Moran, live tonight at Hillcrest in North Springfield. And Sydney, how are you able to see how the money was spent on this project in particular? Well, Mike and Lauren, you'll actually see the changes as you drive up to Hillcrest. Not only is there this new big sign that says Hornets, but when you enter the school, there's going to be a safety and security measures added. Now, safety was a top priority for phase one of Prop S, and it's also a top priority in the proposed projects for phase two, which will include nine schools getting upgrades if approved by voters. This is all new. After roughly $36 million in upgrades, it's out with the old and in with the new at Hillcrest High. This is the original student center. It's been completely reworked and remodeled. It is larger than it used to be significantly, but this is the hub of Hornet life right here. Money from Proposition S, updated spaces dating back to the 1950s. The new wing, which is down here, and that's 29 classrooms and our band and orchestra spaces are down this hall. Springfield Public Schools is looking to fund more projects similar to this at different schools in the district. Voters will see phase two of Prop S on the ballot in April. If passed, it would raise up to $220 million for projects with no tax increase. The 2023 proposed Proposition S projects would include uh, renovating Pershing School, a new Pipkin Middle School, new Reeb Middle School, safety and security measures for all of our campuses. It kind of just transformed. Some of those safety measures are already in action. Previously, you would have walked across the student center to check in. So now, it's a secure vestibule. So we put our main offices behind you right up here at the front, and so that's how everyone gets in. Principal Rob Kroll says the renovations ultimately benefit the students. There are a number of students that this is the kind of thing that really lights their fire. There are actually still some new things coming to Hillcrest, if you can believe it. Today, the school announced there's going to be a Volt Credit Union for next school year, and students will operate the branch here. Reporting in Springfield, Sydney Moran, Ozarks First. You, Sydney, the students stepping into the future with that new building right there. All right, turning into our weather coverage right now, it was kind of nice. We had a little bit of sunshine earlier today, but it still felt like winter. Oh, my down. gosh, <laughs> it's cold out there right now, yeah. too. I know if you just looked out your window, that's all you needed to see that it was a beautiful, inside. beautiful day, but <laughs> cold day yeah. as well. Right now it's still cold with that snow on the ground. We had a little bit of melting throughout today, but most of that snow still, as you can see from our tower cam, temperatures are still cold as well. We have cloudy skies for most of the Ozarks right now, but you can see that they are slowly starting to clear for our far western counties. Now, as we head into our temperatures, we're sitting 29 degrees here in Springfield, 21 up in Rolla and 28 over in Clinton. And because of the winds out there, we're feeling, well, feeling more like those lower 20s in a lot of locations, including here in Springfield, including over in Fort Wood, over in Camdenton, feeling like 11 up in Rolla and 19 up in Lake Ozark. And temperatures are going to continue to decrease as we head into our overnight hours. So starting off 7 a.m., 33 degrees, windy start with sustained winds around 15 to 25 miles an hour. Luckily for us, temperatures are going to be warming back up into those mid to upper 40s. However, the warm up not going to be lasting long. So get out, enjoy it tomorrow and even on Saturday because things are going to quickly be changing as we head into Sunday. Mike. All right, Savannah, thank you. In some more national news, a senator is calling for an investigation into why egg prices are skyrocketing. Senator Jack Reed wants the Federal Trade Commission to investigate potential price gouging and other deceptive practices. The Democrat from Rhode Island says it's crucial to look into the egg industry to see if it is responsible for the surge in prices. Well, the latest numbers for the economy are in and they show the nation's GDP continues to grow but not quite as quickly as the previous quarter. It's all part of the Federal Reserve's plan to bring inflation down. Fox News correspondent Lauren Blanchard is in Washington to explain what Republicans are proposing 
to cut government spending. Even as more companies are announcing layoffs this year, President Biden was in Virginia Thursday to tout his economic policies and slam Republicans. What in God's name would the Americans give up the progress we've made for the chaos they're suggesting? The gross domestic product grew at 2.9 percent in the last quarter of 2022. The lower number was expected because the Federal Reserve has imposed tough interest rate hikes to cool inflation. The plan is working, though not enough yet, and it comes with the risk of a recession. When the Fed raises the rates that fast, they're creating their own banana peel for our country. Investors are jittery, especially as the Treasury has already put in place measures to keep the U.S. from historic default. Secretary Janet Yellen has implored lawmakers to raise the debt limit by mid-year or else. This needs to be resolved. It makes markets nervous. We have a lot of this drama around the debt limit frequently. But some Republicans say they will not raise the debt ceiling without deep spending cuts by Democrats and the White House. We have got to stop caving into the Democrats over here on the Senate side and stop wasteful spending because that's what's causing this debt to go up. The president is planning to meet with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy soon. It is likely the debt limit and the president's wish for a clean bill will be a top issue. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Well, social media app TikTok is one step closer to being banned across the U.S. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley uh, leading that effort, announcing plans to introduce a new bill that would ban the popular social media app worldwide. Right now, about 94 million Americans use that. That includes two-thirds of American teens. It's become the second most popular app in the world. In a tweet, Holly said, in part, TikTok is China's back door into Americans' lives and threatens our children's privacy as well as their mental health. What my bill does is it specifically goes after TikTok. It bans it. It doesn't ban any other app, but it also requires a comprehensive report to Congress on the national security threat that TikTok poses and its relationship with the CCP, with the Chinese Communist Party. There has been no evidence to date of China taking that sensitive information from the app users. By dance, TikTok's parent company has long denied allegations that their app is used to spy on behalf of the Chinese government. And right now, it's unclear if the bill will actually make it through the divided Congress. Coming up next at 9 o'clock, dramatic video out of Colorado when this driver intentionally guns it into the lobby of a police station. You're watching Fox 49 News at 9 with Mike Landis, Lauren Barnes, weather with meteorologist Savannah Tennyson, and sports with Dan Lucy.
You're watching Fox 49 News. A new assault weapons ban in Illinois is facing yet another lawsuit, this time from two Second Amendment lawyers who helped win a landmark Supreme Court case involving gun laws in New York last year. The two are getting help from the National Rifle Association, the NRA and plaintiffs claiming the law violates the Second Amendment and will target gun owners. The lawsuit is the latest of several and comes as many sheriffs in the state say they will not enforce the ban. Illinois Senator Rick Durbin responded by saying if sheriffs will not follow the law, they should resign. These men who serve as sheriff are not constitutional scholars, nor do they have the constitutional right to decide what is right and wrong. Last week, a county judge in southern Illinois blocked enforcement of the assault weapons ban after nearly 900 gun owners filed a state lawsuit challenging the law. Yesterday, a man in Colorado was arrested after he intentionally drove into the lobby of a police station. Take a look at this dramatic footage right here, uh, taken from the Grand Junction PD building, showing that truck smashing right into the lobby. Of course, police didn't have to walk far to arrest the guy, which they did uh, promptly after pulling him from that truck. Now, since there were people inside the building at the time, he's now been charged with attempted murder, attempted assault, and attempted vehicular homicide. And now some frightening video of a bus in Turkey crashing into a lake after the driver lost control. Footage there from inside the bus showed the moment of panic from the bus driver and passengers as the water rushed right in. Look at that. The bus was boarding a ferry to cross the lake when that accident took place. The local government says thankfully nobody was killed, but three people had to be taken to the hospital. Thankfully, their injuries not life threatening. Well, as we head into this weekend, we have that Chiefs game on Sunday, and we have the potential for some rain, wintry mix as we head into Saturday night and early into Sunday. Things are going to be staying cold on Sunday, so bundle up if you are headed out to the game. And then another chance for some rain showers, wintry mix, snow showers, and even the potential for freezing rain is in the forecast Monday and Tuesday. Coming up, I'll have the details you should know.
Fox 49 weather with Savannah Tennyson, certified by Weather 8 as the most accurate forecast in the Ozarks six years in a row. Well, remember back on the 17th of January, 62 degrees, and then things finally started to level out. In the past three days, we've been well below average for this time of year. So average here in Springfield is now 45 degrees. So you can see here today, 31 degrees, 35 yesterday, and then 37 on Tuesday. Now, the good news is we are going to be thawing out as we head into tomorrow and even into Saturday. But temperatures tonight still going to be cold. 29 here in Springfield right now with the snow blanketed on the ground. South winds seven miles an hour. You can see that the clouds are slowly, slowly starting to clear out as we head into 946. And then temperatures are going to continue to drop back down into the mid 20s. Feels like in the teens. So as you wake up tomorrow at 7 a.m., we're going to have mostly sunny skies, especially sunny skies into northern Arkansas. Some clouds are going to be passing by throughout the day, but mostly sunny skies for us in the forecast. 25 degrees tonight here in Springfield, 24 up in Lake Ozark and 30 down in Branson. So it's still going to be a very cold morning. So get that jacket ready. As we head into tomorrow, 47 degrees at southwest wind at 15 to 20 miles an hour is going to be making for a very breezy day on tap. So you will need that windbreaker as you head out the door tomorrow, either to work or even to school. 54 down in Fayetteville. And then as we head into Saturday morning, things still staying calm. However, we have a little more cloud coverage north of I-44. Things start to get interesting, though, as we head into Saturday night into Sunday morning. So timing this out for you, here's 8 p.m on Saturday evening. You can see rain showers trying to line up along I-44, including over in Lebanon, Camden, up near Warsaw, all the way down into Monette. Now watch it very closely for far northern counties. You're going to be starting to see pink and then some snow showers as well. It's going to be a very quick transition. Really nothing out of this. Maybe a little bit of uh, slick roads in the morning, but I don't think other than that, no snow accumulation, guys. Unfortunately, I know. I'm sorry. You guys missed out on this last snowstorm that we saw a few days ago. 52 degrees on Saturday here in Springfield. 57 over in Joplin. Still, though, that wet the south wind at 15 to 25 miles an hour making for a breezy day. That's that cold front that's going to be sweeping through. And then a very very, very cold Sunday on tap at 34 here in Springfield. And that north northeast wind at 10 to 20 miles an hour. Cloudy skies overall. And if you're going to be braving the weather to go to the Chiefs game in Kansas City on Sunday at 530, kickoff 24 degrees. However, feeling more like 12 degrees. And it's all thanks to that north northeast wind at 10 to 15 miles an hour. As we head into halftime around 22 degrees, feeling more like 9, 10 degrees. So it's going to be a very, very cold start to the game and to the end of the game as well. So as we head into next week, here is the pattern. Temperatures well below average potential for a second round of rain, freezing rain Monday night into Tuesday. Some snow mix as we head into later on Tuesday. And then the sun will be returning late next week. Here's your seven day forecast. As we head into the next two days, enjoy it. We're finally going to be thawing out 34 degrees on Sunday, a little bit of snow possible late on Monday, and then that chance for a wintry mix as we head into Tuesday, 32 degrees to start off February. Mike. All right. Thank you, Savannah. And speaking of those dropping temperatures, a lot of families out there may be using space heaters and fireplaces to keep warm. They can also be very dangerous, according to experts, even deadly if you're not careful. Space heaters account for about one third of home heating fires and about 80% of those deaths. That's according to the National Fire Protection Association. They say never plug a space heater into a power strip and don't overload outlets. And remember to turn it off when you leave home or go to bed for the night. And they recommend keeping anything flammable at least three feet away from those heating appliances. Coming up in sports, the Lady Bears are back on the hardwood. Can Beth Cunningham's troops take down number one? That's next.
And now, sports on Fox 49 News. The Missouri State Lady Bears opened a two-game homestand tonight against two of the tougher teams in the Valley. First up, Northern Iowa tonight. And then Drake on Saturday. Panthers tied for first in the conference. Drake's in second place. Lady Bears right behind the Bulldogs. Fifth-year senior Sidney Wilson honored before the game for scoring 1,000 career points. Both teams shooting better than 50% in the opening period. Paige Rocca knocks down this mid-range to even the score at 13 apiece. Just under eight minutes to play in the second quarter. India Green with the bank shot here to give the Lady Bears a 24-21 lead. Green, a team high 14 points tonight. 90 seconds left before halftime. Cynthia Wolf buries her only three-pointer of the game. Wolf, Panthers in front by seven. Led by five at the halftime, third quarter, Panthers would go ahead by as many as 14. Grace Bolefi with the layup underneath. She poured in 13 for you and I, but the fourth quarter, thanks to a 17-4 run, Missouri State claws back to get to within one point. And I, Thomas's transition makes it 63-62. Less than 30 seconds left. Rocca with the three-point attempt misses, but Sydney Wilson there with the board and the basket and Missouri State Lady Bears rally from 14 down to upset Northern Iowa 71-67. It seemed like every time, you know, a little bit of adversity was thrown at us, we just kept responding. And I think that's a huge step for us because there were certainly some plays where we could have gone the other way and um, they just kept fighting. We just didn't give up and finally turned the tide and, and got the momentum and uh, just some outstanding performances from a lot of different kids. The Highway 13 catfight renewed tonight in Bolivar. The jury men and women taking on Southwest Baptist teams. On the women's side, the Lady Panthers climbed up one spot to number two in the country in this week's D2 women's poll. Drury is 18-1 and one this season. Tipped off the game with a 14-game winning streak, but the Lady Bearcats were hungry for an upset. SBU looking inside to Claudia Van Zant for the basket. We're tied up at five. Then Elena Fromming would put the ball on the deck, drive to the basket for the hoop and the harm, and we are tied up at 11. Drury going inside as well. Carry on Moore with the jumper to make it 13-13. This one was a tight first half. Kaylee Demitz Holt with this three in the second quarter, three over 19. That made it 20-20. SBU answers with another dish in the paint. Tori Hamilton with the catch and shoot layup. It was 22-20 Bearcats. Drury's Ree Gibbons heated up late in the second quarter. Baseline jumper here. Then the freshman from Nixa with another jumper. She led the Lady Panthers with 20 points. Big second half. Number two Drury pulls away in the second half and wins. It's 15th in a row, 80 to 54. On the men's side, Southwest Baptist trying to extend its winning ways against Drury. Bearcats have won four of the last five. Drury's Logan Applegate drives to the rack, scored the Panthers' first nine points. But SBU had the lead and built on it. Quinn Nelson with the catch and shoot three. 18-9 Bearcats. Noah Franklin, a monster inside slip screen and the two-handed flush. 28-17 Bearcats, then Franklin again beats two defenders. Another dunk from the other side of the lane. Southwest Baptist beats Drury the final tonight, 82-67. No oh, way, 13 cat fight. I like that. Yeah, you bear, got some sound effects for bear that? Bearcats and Panthers. <laughs> come on. Put your heart into it. There we go. I knew that could come out of Dan Lucy. We'll see you tomorrow.